So I will quickly tell you a, a story <coughs> about a happy place in space. Um, if you've seen me uh, talk about gravitational lens and, and general relativity before, you know that this is my favorite picture. Um, but it's not just that uh, space was happy, Einstein was happy too. Um, because uh, there is another result from the LIGO Observatory. Normally, we tend to think of space as being just space, up and down, side to side, back and forth. It's, it's rectangular, it's, it's flat, as we say, Euclidean. But one of the great insights that our friend Albert um, had was that maybe one way to think about gravity uh, is that maybe to do the math as those spaces curved. And like this little picture shows you, instead of it being up, down, right, left, you know, perfectly everything orthogonal, that when there's mass, heavy mass around it, bends space-time so that lengths are different in one direction versus the other. And it, it has the effect of like providing curvature. So for example, an, an example, a very kind of simple one, you know, you drive to New York to Los Angeles, if you had a straight road, you'd think you were just driving straight, but the surface of the planet is curved, so in fact you're doing another, you're actually curving as you go over the Earth's surface. That's the, the solid surface of Earth, but space has the same kind of attribute. When you go near something that's massive, there's actually a curve kind of built in to, uh, to space, to space time. And um, that's why things kind of fall in. If you imagine rolling a marble along that, uh, if it got anywhere near that dimple created, created by that large yellow massive body, it would just fall in. If you rolled it with enough uh, speed, it might be deflected, but it would keep on going. And that's what we see when we see things in orbit or we see gravitational deflections and that sort of thing. So anyway, the curvature of space-time can do all kinds of fun things, like let Matthew McConaughey travel into new <laughs> dimensions. It can hide cats. Uh, and um, and uh, because of the nature of space-time, when there's something really massive or energetic happening, like the merger of two black holes, it, it causes space-time itself to sort of jiggle. There it is right there. See how it kind of wobbled? Because the energy released of the merger of these two black holes was so great, it caused things to wobble. We can pick up that wobble here on Earth. It's insane. The wobble of space-time is like one one-thousandth the width of a proton. It's so tiny, barely, barely perceptible. Not perceptible, let's just put it that way. It's not perceptible. Well, leave it to clever scientists and engineers who have been working for a long, long time to create this observatory called LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational <coughs> Wave Observatory. And it's actually two buildings, each of them with these long uh, tubes. And uh, at the end of each tube is a mirror, and they shoot a light beam down the tube and back. And just based on how that light beam is ever so slightly altered on that long path that it takes, they're able to actually <laughs> detect this little tiny, tiny wobble of space-time. Now those two observatories that I mentioned are uh, actually kind of far apart. One is in Washington State, one is in Louisiana. And so when they get the same signal, uh, you know, at close to the same time, it's not like a local truck rolling by or an earthquake or something. It's coming from space. Ooh, it came from outer space. And so uh, what kind of is going on here is that this is gradually, uh, greatly exaggerated. I love that little, I'm so glad they put that on there, that the Earth uh, sort of stretches and shrinks as the gravitational waves come by. And, and then it, because of the speed up as it spins up, it wobbles faster, faster, faster. And then you get that, um, that effect. So here are the light beams going down those four kilometer long tubes. And they wiggle too, and they interfere with each other and give a little signal, that little up and down signal. So that's the nature of LIGO and big, big, big news. Uh, last year um, and in 2015, well, 2015 was when it happened, it was announced in 2016, they discovered two, possibly three um, mergers of black holes. Uh, and then they went dark for a while and upgraded the facility. And then they turned it back on in November and lo and behold, uh, this is the artist's conception, kind of looks like Jupiter, uh, they found another um, in January. 
And uh, so there's the little wiggly thing that is characteristic. You can see the two different, uh, one is from, uh, the yellow and the blue are from the two different observatories and the black there is the model. And from that, they were able to determine all kinds of details about the nature of the merger. Um, and there's the signal again, looking quite wonderful. Um, and so this is starting to really add up with statistics. I mean, the first one you saw a lot of announcements, oh, Einstein was right, Einstein was right. And if you've seen me talk about this topic before, you know that I like to emphasize that that's not really the result. I mean, Einstein, there have been a lot of wonderful uh, affirmations of Einstein's theory of general relativity. So it's not that this finally proves it to be true. Yes, it adds, again, in the spirit of science, adds another line of evidence that supports it. But what's really remarkable is that, uh, that relativity, general relativity, as we understand it and formulated it, is, works all the way in this crazy, crazy domain of really high mass super warped space-time environments. Um, and no needed modifications, no funny little signals that aren't quite right. It really, it really is able to describe this and to start giving us details of black hole mergers. So now the science that comes out of it is trying to understand how many black hole mergers, why are there so many, we're seeing a lot of them. Can we understand the nature of their, the masses of the black holes are not really the standard mass that we always think about black holes being either less or a whole lot more, you know, millions or even billions of times the mass of the sun. So now the, the, the nature of it is changing as we build up these statistics. Um, right now there are just the two there, the LIGO in the United States. Uh, the Virgo array or Virgo detector in, um, is coming online in the end of this year. And once you've got three, then like cell phone towers, you'll be able to localize the source. Right now, we can sort of say, hey, it's kind of over there. But when you've got the third one, then you can actually triangulate and get the location of the source and look for other signals that might or might not be emanating from that spot. Because right now, there's too much space to search to say, OK, can I find anything there? Because we don't really know where they're coming from. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, there is a lot planned down in the future uh, of being able to really study this effect at uh, all kinds of um, levels and, and frequencies. We're seeing the very last little bits of the t final spin down when it goes, you know, and twirls together. But in fact, you ought to be able to see longer period um, oscillations uh, through other means um, as we develop the technologies to go forward.